So I'm gonna put y'all in a scene right now. You sit down at the movie theater. It's like a Pixar movie or a Marvel movie or a Star Wars movie. Something with multi-generational appeal that both adults and kids are gonna go to. You get a few minutes into the movie, the main action or comedic set piece at the beginning, it plays out and it set the mood and everything. Everyone's into it. And then the movie slows down a little bit. Maybe the characters start talking about their feelings or their motivation. Maybe they're building some suspense of some kind. Maybe there's not a whole lot of dialogue happening at all. And it's mostly just like camera stuff trying to set up an intricate machine of thrills that's eventually gonna pop at the end and it's gonna be really satisfying. But in this moment, you start hearing some noise. Maybe a, maybe a little someone is kicking their little feet against the seat because they can't handle the lack of stimulation happening to their eyes. Maybe they start running up and down the, the aisles because the parents into the movie, they, they, they already spent their money. What are they gonna do? Chase this little bastard around and keep him from distracting everyone else? Hell no, 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 he's, he's your problem now. Or maybe you got someone who just shouldn't be there at all. Anyone below the age of one who doesn't know what anything is. Doesn't matter if they're happy, doesn't matter if they're sad, doesn't matter if they think something's funny, they're, they're gonna scream and cry. How annoying. What, what, what a damper this puts on your night at the movies. We've all been there, we all agree that it's annoying, but at the end of the day, I can let it slide, because kids are kids, they're not emotionally developed enough to handle things such as quiet or a lack of, you know, color and farts and poopy jokes. Annoying nonetheless. But I can think of something that's way more annoying. Imagine now that one of these kids got older. And I don't mean grew up, just older and mentally and emotionally nothing else happened. It's in situations like this you get people like the asshat behind me and my friends at a quiet place. Before I go any farther, this movie was really good. Probably not as good as I wanted it to be, but still pretty fucking good. I love John Krasinski as an actor and being able to see him work in front of and behind the camera was really exciting to me. To see him and his wife Emily Blunt, who I also really dig, in the same movie, that's enough of a novelty for me to give a crap. So really likable people in it, a concept that I can dig, something that hasn't really been done before. The idea of having to be cautious of the noises around you in order to survive, like, that's perfect for a medium like film, which is mostly visually driven. At the end of the day, it's a gimmick, I'll admit that, and gimmicks are great for marketing. Every ounce of marketing for this film tells you straight up that this is gonna be a soft one. There's not gonna be a whole lot of talking, and if there is, it's gonna be sign language for people going shh, because to go any louder than that is gonna, it's gonna cost you your ass. Every single trailer I saw spelled this out in plain bold letters. And yet somehow we sit down for the movie, we get about five minutes into it, there's been a couple of exchanges of sign language, some oh shit moments where things are about to get loud, and this person, fuck this guy. The family in the film starts talking to each other in sign language, and because not everyone speaks sign language, which is just a fact, they have to have subtitles at the bottom. And this guy, this person who lives in the same plane of existence as me, has the fucking gall to say, oh, Am I gonna have to read every line in this movie? Look, babe, the whole thing's like this, we walking out. Buddy, unless you're one of these low IQ motherfuckers who just, like, throws a dart at a board with a bunch of movies on it without knowing a single thing about them, you had to have known it was gonna be like this. If you're not into suspenseful movies, if you're not into slow movies, fine, whatever, people are into what they're into. But to go into this thing that's so transparently gonna be how it's gonna be, to act surprised, and then to be so entitled to satisfaction that you're gonna express your displeasure loud enough for every other person in that theater to hear you, go home. I'm gonna say all the subtitles out loud because I'm showing off to this girl I'm trying to bone. I'm gonna very adamantly say what I would have done in this situation. I would have kicked his ass. If I were in a horror movie, I would be Ellen Ripley instead of the little bitch that everyone's annoyed by, despite the fact that they would totally be her in that scenario. I wish you actually left like you said at the beginning instead of staying the whole way through, cause unshockingly enough, there's a mood setting set piece at the beginning of this film that's so good, that's so built on the fact that it's quiet, 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 and then suddenly not. It's filmmaking that's so good that even the naysayers shut their fucking mouths after it happens and you're hooked the rest of the way through. That is to say, you're hooked enough that you're gonna stay the entire runtime, but if you're already this kind of person, you're gonna run your yap a few more times. 
how fucking ironic that people who just can't handle a lack of noise or <laughs> in the movies that they watch are also realistically the least likely to survive in a situation where these creatures come down from the sky who thrive off of being able to hear their prey. You're gone. We boring fucks who like this artsy bullshit where ain't nobody even killing no one with no gun. A soy boy motherfuckers who are able to handle the void for more than 30 seconds are gonna outlive you. Sure, as soon as we're close enough to one of those things that either you or I is gonna make it out of the room, you're probably gonna make it, but you're also the reason that they would have found us in the first place, and I know you're the kind of person who could live with that on your conscience because... <laughs> it's so hard to put into words the frustration that I feel around people like this, especially in a goddamn movie theater. Ironically enough, the closest thing I had experienced to that was, of all places, a screening for 12 years a slave. There were 10 minutes left. Me and the like 17 other people in the audience just experienced a portrait of just how shittily we can treat each other as human beings. And this guy sitting in the back, his phone goes off. It rings for a little bit, it's on vibrate, I'll give him that much. But he answers it. He answers the phone. And starts talking. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost done. Yeah, I'll be leaving in like 20 minutes. Oh, you sure? You sure? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, it's like almost over. I agree, guy. It's almost over. So why the fuck couldn't this wait? There's a huge divide between film critics and general film audiences right now, and look, I get it. There's clearly a gap of what people prefer when they go to the movies there, and that's something that I'm not gonna be able to control. But shit like this, this bare-bones, surface-level stuff that doesn't actually impede your experience if you just, like, let it happen to you for more than a few minutes. There's not a lot of talking. Oh, it's in black and white. Oh, they're singing in it. You just have to be a really close-minded motherfucker where it just takes one of these things for the entire movie to be ruined for you. Because going back to elements of the movie that matter, you know, the direction, the cinematography, the sound design, which is so good, by the way. It plays on the fact that we're used to movies that just drill holes into our eardrums with the explosions and the gunfire and the metal moving around and the cars and the vroom vroom and the uh. Sorry, that last one was like a metaphorical noise. All that is good, but because you're such a goddamn mammal when it comes to your movie preferences, you don't notice any of that. All you notice is that you have to read sometimes. And for some reason, that's just too much for you to fucking handle. And yeah, spoiler alert, there's some talking in this movie, but part of me is actually convinced that it's only in there as a buffer for the people going to this thing who just wouldn't be able to handle no talking at all. You do realize that there were two or three decades into the invention of cinema where there was no dialogue whatsoever. The most noise you got were the piano players who performed live while the movie was going down and Buster Keaton was almost getting squashed by houses. They already had radio, they already had music, they already had like audio dramas at this point, but people loved it. There was something magical about seeing just shit moving back and forth on the screen. That's all it took. Movies still have that magic if you let it wash over you. The techniques we use in order to tell these stories has gotten way better since then. But for some reason, a good chunk of the population is convinced that the only reason it's good is because it's shot in color, and if it is shot in color, it's hypersaturated, so the reds are really red, the blues are really blue, everything's got this orange-tinged, through aviator's sunset, like, sparkle going on, and there's gotta be just noise at all times. If it's not, like, cars or cityscapes, or talking about, wow, do you think he really likes me? No, I don't think he likes you. Are you lying to me just so you can get to me? Yeah. How could you? I'm sorry. I forgive you. I'm gonna do it again. Shut up! I don't think you need all this talking in movies. Sometimes it's easier to get the point across if you're not saying something, you know, people are, the audience is smart, they can see how somebody feels or how they feel about that person or whatever, so sometimes when you're talking, I think, for me anyway, it just gets in the way of, uh, of it and, 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 and so it was a real relief to get to just take that out of this and, and, and let people just just watch it and make their own assessments of what they think the characters are going through. And then if that's not enough, if none of that noise is happening, you gotta put generic ass pop music into it just to fill any void of silence that would make you question your existence or why the world is the way it is, which I know is really scary to a lot of you people. Just don't go. 
don't go to a quiet place. Don't go to any movie that might be a little too different than what you're used to. Because, and this might shock you, the people there with you who you're complaining about spending your money to go see this thing, they spent money too. And none of the billing on that marquee mentioned anything about some douche canoe who thought that his opinion was so important that he had to passive aggressively express it during this film that took a year or more to make and is a product of a lot of effort from like hundreds of people. Stay at home. Stay at home. As for the rest of you, go see this movie. It's really fucking good.